brothers and sisters who are listening. Dear respected brothers and sisters who are listening, Jazakallah uh, khair for taking this Sunday afternoon out. I know you've got many things to look forward to on this uh, bank holiday weekend. Let's spend a few moments ago. We've got about 55 minutes uh, till 3 o'clock. And inshallah, it's my intention as well to finish by 3 o'clock. I have to leave promptly as, uh, promptly as well after this. I've got another program in Batley uh, in the evening at 6 o'clock. So they're coming to pick me up from here. So there's a few minutes with, you, with yourselves, and it's a reminder to myself as well. My dear respected brothers and sisters who are listening, <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said to us, he said, which one of you would want, which one of you would want his own heir? Heir is the person who's going to inherit from you. Which one of you would want your son, <coughs> your daughter, your grandchild, your brother, your sister, to have all your wealth and for you to not have that wealth. For you to give your wealth to your heir and for you to be deprived of that wealth. This is the Messenger of Allah. Each one of us loves to have our own wealth to ourselves before our heir takes it from us. Each one of us likes to have the wealth ourselves until we die. And when we're dead, we're gone, then our inheritance, then my son can take it, my daughter can take it, my others can, no problem. But as long as I'm living, my wealth is most dearest to me. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, something very dear. And this will summarize the reason why I'm giving this talk. This will also tell you and give you an understanding of what is really going on with yourself, with myself, and our future. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commented by saying, what you have, what you have sent forth for the next life is yours. And what you have not sent and you've left behind is theirs. It is already theirs. He said, Laka ma qaddamta wa lahum ma akharta. For you is that which you've already sent for the Akhirah, not this dunya. You can be fooling yourself to, sit, to think that wealth here, my earning, my wealth, my livelihood, something important to me, something gives me good satisfaction, is my house, my property, my land. It's my children, it's my gifts, it's my games, it's my toys, it's my cars, it's my phones, it's this, it's that. this is nothing. Rasulullah <laughs> said, this is all your heirs. The moment you die, it's finished. Prophet said, Yaquru ibn Adam, Mali, Mali. Son of Adam says, My wealth, my wealth. Wahallaka ibn Adam min mal. 
O son of Adam, do you have any wealth? Illa ma akalta fa afnaita. Except that which you've put in your mouth, the food you put in your mouth, and if it stays in your mouth, look, if the food is in the shop, you, you don't own it. If it comes into your house, you still, it's not your wealth. Rasulullah it's not your wealth. If it's in your fridge, it's not your wealth. If your wife has cooked it, it's in the pot, it's not your wealth. If it comes on your plate, it's not your wealth. If you take it in your mouth, he says it's not your wealth. If it goes in your stomach, he says not, not your wealth. Until you haven't sent it back to the toilet, it's not your wealth. Because that food you take in your mouth, my brother, that food you take in your mouth, how do you know which one is going to make you choke to death? There are people in the world who die because of choking on their own food. Mali, Mali, my wealth, my wealth. And that wealth, they spend money to buy it. They spend money to store it. They spend money to cook it. They spend, spend a lot of effort to get it on the plate. And they, the guy smells it. And it's so nice. And he doesn't know it's his death. He smells it. Oh, my wife cooked a lovely biryani. Oh, oh. Let me taste that. Put a bit of chutney on top, a bit of pickle on top, and the guy doesn't know his death is on his plate. So the Rasulullah reminded him, Lakama, akalta fa afnaita. Now, there's another guy, he's ate it, and wow, his stomach's full. Chicken and chips when he last night. Man, that was beautiful. Oh, he's just licked his fingers. He normally doesn't clean the plate. With chicken and chips, he has the last small bit of chip that has got no potato in it. It's just oil. He would even eat that. He scrunch that up. Normally in his house, you give him a bone, he'll have so much meat on him, throw it away. You give him chicken and chips, mashallah, he will take every piece of that chicken. And, oh, and it's so nice. Yeah? You want to do the sunnah, brothers, do the sunnah in every plate. Don't, be, don't select your best food, you do the sunnah of the Prophet also. The food you don't like, <laughs> somebody else will do the sunnah. The cat will do the sunnah. Yeah, the cat will get the bin, will do the sunnah, not me. Yeah. <coughs> so he's taken it inside and yesterday he took it, oh, and it felt so good. In the morning he woke up with a stomachache. He didn't know last night's chicken and chips was food poison. Rasulullah so said, Laka ma akalta fa afnaita. You have to digest it fully. If you don't digest it, it's not yours. There are some people who die with stomach pains, with food poison. They ate it, they thought that's it, alhamdulillah. But that was an alhamdulillah, it was inna lillah. It was inna lillah. <laughs> and he says the second one is, he said, walaka, he said for you is, illa, it is illa ma akalta fa afnaita, wa ma labista fa ablaita. The clothes that you got right now in your body is not yours. If you die this moment, your son takes it, somebody else takes it, it's gone. He said, the clothing you've worn and then you've torn, worn and torn until you cannot wear it anymore. It's finished. No one's going to wear it. That's when it was yours. All the clothes in your cupboard, sisters have got shoes in their cupboards. The sisters have this thing about shoes, shoes here yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes brothers have shirts, shirts and trousers, trousers and sometimes, I don't know, it gets, it becomes an obsession. You know, and when sisters, our sisters like to match their clothing, yeah? So they have a red sort of dress, then they have to have a red handbag, then they have to have red shoes as well, then they have to have red makeup as well. They have to be completely red. Then one day they turn pink, the next day they turn purple, and God forbid if they turn black. <laughs> so my sisters, please take it easy, because all those shoes and dresses, whatever you've got in your houses, they're not yours. You're fooling yourself. And you've got to, if somebody's going extravagant in their clothing, they have to give an answer on the Day of Judgment. Then Rasulullah said, the third thing is yours. Only three things you have. What goes in your mouth, you digest it. What is worn by you, and you torn it. And the third thing he said, And if form of charity you have sent to the next world, it is yours. You will find it in the next world. Any form of charity you've sent, that's yours. That's your bank balance. The biggest bank is the bank of the Akhirah. Barclays, HSBC, Lloyd's, TSB, yeah? yeah, these are not banks. They are milking systems. They will tell, take you in, yeah, they'll feed you grass, then they want milk, milk, they want to milk you. And when you send dung out, yeah, 
When you send dung out, they'll use that to make something else as well. And then they milk you, milk you, milk you. Right? They're, they're, not, they're giving you grass. Alhamdulillah. Grass. That cow thinks, Alhamdulillah. He's eating, yeah? But he doesn't know his milk is stolen from him. And when he gets too fat, then his kurbani is over, over. Kurbani. HSBC is fattening customers up. Lloyd CSB, Barclays, NatWest, they're fattening customers up. You come, give us money. Yeah, take this, take this. Credit, don't pay anything. Six months later, oh, yes, yes, yes. The guy doesn't know he's been robbed. Robbed. Credit cards, systems. What are they doing to you? They're robbing you, the daylights out of you. You think that green grass credit is really good for you? Man, you don't know what they're taking out of you. You don't know what you're taking out of you. After six months later, the guy can't keep up with his payments. He can't keep up with his mortgage. Then what is it? They take your house off you. They take your. They'll, they'll put extra money if you're taking two thousand pound debt. You can't pay it on time. That's it. Two thousand two hundred. <coughs> two thousand four hundred. Two thousand six hundred. And then in the end, five thousand, six thousand. They don't care. Do you, do you think they care about you? They don't care until you are you are madbor. You are sacrificed on the ground. They don't care. The real bank is the bank of the Akhir. Subhanallah. <laughs> Whatever you have with yourself, whatever bank system you have, whatever you're storing right now, it is going to come to an end. Whatever you leave with me, Allah, whatever you leave with me, my bank, you will find that in the end. Whatever good you send forth to me, you will find that goodness in front of you on the Day of Judgment. Allah will not rob anyone. Now listen, you go to the bank and you put 10 pounds in there. They tell you they're going to give you 3 point something interest. You leave a thousand pounds something interest. Yes, interest. That interest, obviously we know is haram. But nevertheless, they try and give you interest. Why? Because they want you to keep that money there. Then one day comes the Greek bank crisis. You heard about the recent Greek bank crisis, haven't you? They fed all these fat cows with all their fat monies that came in their banks. And now Greece has an international, uh, a, a national crisis. They say, oh, sorry, you cannot take your money out of the bank. I'm sorry. You will only be able to take this much, this much uh, euro from the... From the they got 100,000 in there, 200,000 in there. And they tell them, you can only take maximum maybe 3, 4,000, 10,000, whatever limit there is on their banks. They'll take it. Allah says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ You come to my bank and you give me one pound, you give me one penny, I will multiply it. I will multiply it by 700. <laughs> give me one, I will multiply by how many? فِي كُلِّ سُمُّ لِمِيَأَةِ Allah says, in every corn of here, I'll give you seven kilos of corn and every single corn you will have. 100 more, 100 more, 700 in total. That is the beginning of your bank balance with me. Wallahu yudha'ifu yasha. And Allah will increase for whoever he wants. You want more than 700? I will give you more than 700. This is my bank balance. This is my bank balance. The one who is rich in the akhirah is the real rich one. The one who is rich in this dunya, that's not enough. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there's two types of sunnah. One is sunnah qawliya, what is sunnah, sunnah al-a'mal. One is the sunnah from his mouth, and there's another sunnah from his a'mal. My brothers, yes, you should be interested in reading Sahih Bukhari, you should be interested in reading Sahih Muslim, you should be interested in reading Imam Nawawi's Riyadh al-Salihin, and read Mishkat al-Masabi and the books of Hadith. But don't forget, these are only sunnah al-aqwal. They are only the mere statements of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It's like having a manual. You know, a manual, a book, you get a book at home and you learn. Imagine somebody comes home and he has a brand new PS3 or his brand new Xbox and he's so excited. He's got a brand new Xbox. Is that the latest one? What's the latest Xbox, guys? Anyone tell me? You don't want to talk to me right now, do you? What's the latest Xbox? What is it? Anyone know? The PS4 is coming. So imagine someone goes and gets a PS4, yeah? And he's so excited. So he gets his PS4 and he's so excited. So he opens it. And he sees the instructions and manuals. So he takes the manual out and he says, Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat everyone at this, yeah? I'm gonna know all the tricks and moves of this PS4. So he opens his manual and he starts to read instruction, how to set up, how to do this, how to do that, how to, how to, how to, how to. He reads the whole book. 
He reads the whole book and after that he puts his whole book into his shelf and he says, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I've read my PS4 book, I, book now, right? And then after that he basically just goes out the room. He leaves his PS4 there. One day later he comes back and he goes back to his manual again, takes it out and looks at that. Oh yeah, 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 that's, that's how you do that thing. He puts it back in. He doesn't touch any wires, he doesn't touch any box, anything. He leaves it there. One week gone, two weeks gone, three weeks gone. You're going to say, is he too busy? What's wrong with him? But when one month's gone, when six months have gone, one year has gone, he's got so much time to take that, put it, plug it in, my friend. Put the wire to the box. Stop playing. But he doesn't do that. He just reads, oh, oh. Okay. <coughs> The person who <coughs> wants hadith, he likes Bukhari, he likes Muslim. He yeah, Google searches. Rasulullah Sallallahu said this. Rasulullah Sallallahu said this. He did this. He did that. Oh, oh, I know this. Oh, I know this. Oh, I've learned something. I will quote this tomorrow. They will say, how many hadiths I know. He's reading his manual. He's reading his manual. But he's not playing with his PS4. He's reading his manual every day. He's not playing with his PS4. The reason why he bought the box was to play. And the reason why he bought Bukhari was to pray. The reason why he bought Muslim was to do ibadah, was to get close to Allah. Not sit there and just read the hadith. If you read the hadith, you read the manual. Don't be a fool in reading the manual and not going and doing what you're supposed to do. There are so many brothers and sisters who read the Quran. They read the Quran. They think, wow, wow. Is that the guy looking at his PS4 manual? Wow. What's the point of wow? Guys are plugging in. What's the point of you knowing about Salah when you sleep through Fajr? What's the point? You read, you know, you read the Sunnah. You said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, four rakats. He said, from Allah, he reports from Allah. Oh my, oh son of Adam, you read four rakats in the morning and I will take care of you for the rest of the day. Allah. You read four rakats in the morning and I will take, you, take care of you for the rest of the day. He reads that, he gets excited. After that, Fajr is in bed. Fajr is in bed. That is not the man, that's just the man. <coughs> Brothers, the thing is for us to get in to practice the sunnah. Now how to practice, I'm going to give you a few things today you're going to take away with me. How to make yourselves rich for the bank of the akhirah. And I'm going to give you a few things and you're going to remember them here and you're going to practice them today. Inshallah, it's going to be very simple. I'm not going to, I'm going to, not going to tell you to read, uh, you know, 12 rakats tahajjud from one end of the night to the other end of the night. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to be very simple because they came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Messenger of Allah. You know this last thing Prophet ﷺ said? He said, وَمَا تَصَدَّقْتَ فَأَمْضَيْتَ He said, the sadaqah you've given, the charity you've given, and you've stored it into the next life. So they said, Messenger of Allah. Messenger of Allah. The poor sahabas did. Messenger of Allah. Masjid Allah, we have been left behind. Our brothers have gone in front of us. Masjid of Allah, please. Nasumu kama nasu, yasumu na kama nasumu. They fast like we fast, when you sallu na kama nusalli. They pray like we pray, they fast like we fast. But they have one thing we don't have, O oh, Messenger of Allah. O oh, Messenger of Allah, they have money which they give in the next, for the next world. And we have no money to give for the next world. We have no money, so therefore they are beating us in this. Do something for us, Messenger of Allah. They spoke on our behalf. Prophet said, أَوَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ قَدْ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مَا تَصَدَّقُونَ بِهِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ Hasn't Allah made something for you which you can give sadaqah with? And they were perplexed. Hasn't Allah given you something you can give sadaqah with? Bikulli tasbihatin sadaqah. You say, Subhanallah, you've given charity in the path of Allah. Subhanallah. You say, Alhamdulillah, you've given charity in the path of Allah. Say, Alhamdulillah. You say, La ilaha illallah, you've given charity in the path of Allah. You say, Allahu Akbar, you've given charity in the path of Allah. You help a person who is on a camel or on a car, and he has to live, lift his luggage into the car. You lift that luggage and you give it to him in his boot or on his, on his car. You have given charity in the path of Allah. حَتَّى مَا تُلْقِي فِي فِي 
even as a gesture of goodwill, if you pick some morsel of food and you put it into your wife's mouth out of love, then you have given charity in the path of Allah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Charity. Charity, guys. You got no money? You want to give charity? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said this. He said, Shall I not tell you something that if you do it, if you do it, you will take over all those who you think they've taken over you. Should I not tell you that you will do something that once you do it, all those after you, you they will not be able to come, come ahead of you. And he said, those of them who are doing it are very little. Innahum, yes. He said that the amal, the action is very simple. But the people who are doing it, he said, very little. Al-amal yaseer. The, the action is very simple, but the people who are doing it is very little. After every salah, he said, if you can do this, okay, you've got no time, you're sitting here, you've just done your fard salah, you come for your fard salah. He said, after your fard salah, he said, say, subhanallah, say this with me, subhanallah, 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 how many times? Ten times. Then, Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Ten times. Ten times. Then, Allahu Akbar, 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 Allahu Akbar. How many times? How many total have you done? 30. He says, for 30, for 30 you have done and you will repeat it for five times a day. How many is that? 150. How many? 150. He says, فَخَمْسُونَ وَمِئَا بِالْلِسَانِ 150 you have done by the tongue, but in Allah's scales on the day of judgment you have placed 1,500. 1,150 here, 1,500 there, Allahu Akbar. He says, there's only few who are doing this, and it's so simple. Brothers, you're busy. How long does it take to say, say 10 subhanAllah, 10 alhamdulillah, 10 Allahu Akbar, and you are ahead of all of those who've given charity in the path of Allah. And when you go before, you go to sleep, you do the same thing. And in some rewards it says, it says, after your salah, he says, what do you do? You say Subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33 times. And Allahu Akbar 33 times. Then after that, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Lahul mulhu wa lahul hamdu. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, This is a Sahih Hadith in Muslim. Whoever does this, which takes one minute, one minute. He says, Allah will forgive your sins even if it's to the extent of all the dirt the oceans bring to the earth. <coughs> to the river bank of the seaside. All the dirt they bring to the seaside, Allah will forgive your sins even if it's that much. How simple is that, right? If you can do, if you've got time for 33, 33, 33, 33, you do that. If not, you do just 10, 10, 10. And he said in some narration, he said 33, 33, 34. Okay, some narration 33, 30, 34. Okay, I've told you that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in other words, these simple things I'm giving you, I hope you remember them and you're going to practice them. If you don't practice them, you've read a nice manual and you're not going to play your game. You've read, you've heard nice bayan and you said, mashallah, Qarisa made nice, nice, good. I said, oh, 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 yeah, that's so nice. I sit here, make bayan, fine, fine, you'll get it. Mawlana said the angels will be here, fine. This is for one hour. But that doesn't make you a rich person for the akhirah. Rich person is the one who will do these few things I'm telling you. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whosoever will do the next thing. You know how long this takes? It takes two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening. How many minutes all together? Four minutes. Four minutes. You know four minutes is? Four minutes is to dial a number and you take your phone out, put it on, take the passcode out, dial the number, wait over there, do, 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 do. oh, it's engaged, uh, dial it again, ding, 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 oh, how are you, you okay, oh, yeah, 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 I've got to say this to you, okay, thank you, bye, no. four minutes, one phone call, one simple phone call, 
or some people on the WhatsApp. <laughs> Wherever they are, they're hooked onto WhatsApp. This group and that group and that group. And they think they're on a few seconds. Uh, my brother, those few seconds add up to minutes, those minutes add up to hours, those hours add up to days. And you better watch out how much you're spending there because if you spend too much, the bank of the Akhirah is not going to be there for you. The bank of this world will be there for you. But that's finished. So Prophet said, these <coughs> just, just doing this will take two minutes in the, in the morning, two minutes in the evening. If you do this, he said, nobody will come with more amal, more reward than you on the day. If you do this, no one will beat you in reward. Except if somebody has done the same. Or somebody has done more than you. He said in the morning, read after Fajr. And in the evening, read after Maghrib. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Say with me. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Now you can do fast. You can do fast on your tasbih or something. Say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. 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 It only takes you a couple of minutes in the morning, a couple of minutes in the evening. When you get to the next life, then you're going to get me and inshallah you will hug me if I've made it. If I've made it in the next world, if I'm not caught up somewhere, may Allah forbid me as well, but if I'm not caught somewhere and I've made it, then you're going to hug me. You're going to say, you know, Hassan, you've done, you've done something for me. I've got more than anyone else on the day of judgment. By saying what, two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was passing by, he, he, he read his fajr. When he read his fajr, he got up and he saw his wife Juwairiya radiallahu anha. What's her name? <coughs> Juwairiya radiallahu anha. And she was sitting in the back of the masjid. He saw her sitting down, contemplating, maybe remembering Allah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he passed by her, he went outside, he completed whatever duties he had for the day. And though her time, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came back to the masjid. Fajr in the Hijaz of Saudi Arabia is about 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. And Zuhr always in the Hijaz is about 12 o'clock. So how many hours later did Prophet ﷺ come back? How many was? Six hours later, six hours. And he came and saw Juwairiya still sitting in her place. And he said, oh Juwairiya, why are you sitting in your place so long? What have you been doing? She said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I have been remembering Allah from Fajr till now. SubhanAllah. From Fajr till now, continuously remembering Allah. Now you're going to think, I'm going to tell you to remember Allah from Fajr to Zahar, yeah? You're joking, yeah? You're going to think, Mana, you know, you're pushing, you know, man. Come on, man. I mean, SubhanAllah, you were behind in the morning, two minutes, I was all up, you know, I had two, uh, six hours. Like, you know, he's going to take it easy on us. I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. The Prophet, Prophet Sassim gave you shortcut. You know, shortcut. You like shortcuts, yeah? You know, you want to go through, I don't know, M6 or something, and suddenly they make an M6 toll. And everyone's jam-packed. All the trucks are full of, the M6 is full of trucks. And there's you cruising on the M6 toll, going to your destination. No traffic. Prophet Sallallahu gave a shortcut to six hours. You get to six hours in how long? You know how long? If I told you get in a six-hour journey, and it's going to give you a shortcut, how long should your shortcut take? Go on. Sorry? But how, how, how long do you think your shortcut is going to take to cut six hours? Go on. One hour, maybe three hours, maybe two hours, yeah? Shortcut, yeah? Nice deep, deep road, yeah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave six hour shortcut dhikr. Six hour dhikr reward you get. In only 15 seconds. 15 seconds. He said, Oh Juwairiya, had you said the same thing I said three times? Had you said the same thing I said three times, then you would have got the, the same reward of saying it from Fajr till Zuhar. And these are the words. And you're going to learn it now from me. So you better open your minds, take your head off anything else, right? You're going to learn it now. If anyone asks me the question after this bayan there, what was that again? Uh, can I record you on my thingy? Uh -uh. I'm not going to tell you. <coughs> if anyone asks me after this anywhere, you're not going to get an answer from me. I'm going to say, no, your fault for not learning it. 
If you want to switch off your phones, or switch on your phones right now and you record it, that's fine, I don't mind. But you better not ask me later on that you want me to repeat it or write it. Don't ask me even to write it. I'm not going to write for you. I'm not going to say it for you. I'm not going to write it for you. I'm not going to record it for you. It's only going to take you a few minutes with me to learn it right now. So you switch on your brain, open your ears, open your heart, right? rub your eyes, and get ready. Subhanallah wa bihamdi adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zinata arshihi wa midada kalimati That's it. Three times. That's all you have to remember. Now you're going to learn it with me, okay? I'm going to give you the full translation. I'm going to give you the full reason why we say or what this all means. <laughs> but first I'm going to get you to learn them one by one. So let's say the, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five of them. And the first one you already know. The first one is Subhanallah wa bihamdi. What is it? Say with me. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Adada khalqihi. Say. Adada khalqihi. Say. Adada khalqihi. Again. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Adada khalqihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi Now Subhanallah means Oh Allah, you are far from every imperfection Oh Allah, you are far from every blame Oh Allah, you are far from everything impure Oh Allah, you are so high, so pure, so great, so super That's what Subhanallah means Oh Allah, you are the most most pure and absolutely <coughs> no, absolutely intact in the most pure way you, you're that being that's subhanallah subhanallah means Allah you are so far from every impurity you are so far from everything that is bad everything evil nothing, nothing of that is yours Allah can Allah creates evil but he's not evil Allah can create bad but he's not bad Allah created for a reason that's a reason but he's not evil he is not bad. His actions are not evil. His actions are not bad. Okay? So, subhanallah. And then you say, wa bihamdi. Wa bihamdi means, oh Allah, I praise you. I thank you. I praise you. What does that wa bihamdi mean? I praise you. What does subhanallah mean? Oh Allah, you are so pure. Allah, you are so pure. What does wa bihamdi mean? Oh Allah, I praise you. Okay, everyone join in because you've got to learn this. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi What you're really saying is Oh Allah, how pure you are Oh Allah, I praise you this many times How many times? Adada khalqihi Say Adada khalqihi Say Adada khalqihi Remember the second one is Ayn Ayn Adada khalqihi Say Adad means number And khalq means creation Oh Allah, the number of your creation, as many creations have you got? All the human beings that you've created from Adam alayhi salam till the last man of the day of judgment, as many human beings they are, that many times I say subhanallah to you, that many times I say wa bihamdi and alhamdulillah to you. That many times. Oh Allah, as many jinns have you got on the earth, from the beginning, first jinn till the last jinn. Every jinn amount that you've got, I say subhanallah that many times to you. I say alhamdulillah that many times to you. Oh Allah, as many drops of rain you have, as many drops that have come from the sky, that's many times I've said subhanallah to you, that many times I say alhamdulillah to you. Oh Allah, as many angels have you got, and as many mountains you've got, and rocks you've got, and stones you've got, and the small grains of sand you've got, and the earth you've got, and the earth you've got, and the creation you've got, and the fish in the sea that you've got, and the birds in the sky you've got. As many creation you created, that many times I say subhanallah to you, that many times I say alhamdulillah to you. Say with me. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi Okay, now you've learned the two. Now the third one. Wa rida nafsihi What is it? Wa rida nafsihi Wa rida nafsihi Wa rida nafsihi Rida means the pleasure. And nafsihi means himself. So, O oh Allah, according to your pleasure, until you are pleased, until you are pleased, 
I'm keeping on saying Subhanallah. I'm keeping on saying Alhamdulillah to you. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adad khalqihi wa rida nafsihi. What does Subhanallah mean? Oh Allah, you are so pure. What does Wabihamdi mean? I praise you. What does what does Adada uh, Khalqi mean? As many times you've got your, as much number as your creation. And what does Rida Nafsi mean? Until you are. Let me do that again. Subhanallah, come on, come on. What does Subhanallah mean? Oh Allah, you are so pure. Wabihamdi. Praise you, everyone together. I praise you. If you say it, look, the best way to learn is to teach it yourself. Best way to learn is to say it yourself. So don't be shy. If you get it wrong, I'm not going to say, oh, you, you not listening. Oh, what? I'm not going to take a stick out and beat you up right now. Hey, not that I have a stick. Now, don't be shy. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter, but at least you'll remember it. Wabi hamdihi means what? I, everyone together. I praise you. Everyone together again. That's better. Adad the khalqihi, the amount of creation. Rida nafsihi, until you are pleased, say it. Until you are pleased. Wazina ta'arshihi, say it. Wazina ta'arshihi, wazina ta'arshihi, say it. Wazina ta'arshihi, wazina ta'arshihi. Oh Allah, your throne, your throne. That throne, and how big is that throne? You know how big the throne of Allah is? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa explained in a hadith of Tirmidhi. He said, if you take this earth, you know this earth? Above this, above this we have a sky, yes? This is the sky of the world. Above the sky we have, the, we have, this, we have space, yes? Space. And that space, all that is universe, the universe, yes? At the end of our universe is, is the sama dunya, the real sky or heaven, the first heaven. That's what we call the first heaven. At the end of the universe is the first heaven. Rasulullah said, if you were to take this whole earth and all the galaxies and Milky Ways and all the different planets and stars and all the different black holes and whatever and the whole of the universe, if you were to take that and compare it to the second heaven, which is around this first one, you know the second one? If you pop your head out of the universe, right at the end of the universe, you pop your head out, there's a doorway there. Rasulullah went through the doorway when he went to Miraj. There's a doorway there. And there's angels guarding that doorway. And no one can go through without Allah's permission. So even on the night of Miraj, Allah Azza wa his angels said, Who is it? And Jibreel said, It's Jibreel. He said, Who's with you? He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said, Has he been given permission to come? He said, yes, he's got permission. So then the doors opened. They said, marhaban bika. They said, welcome to this heaven. Welcome to them. That's, on, that's the only way you can get out of the universe. Doesn't matter how many rockets you make. Doesn't matter how many super space you make. You cannot get past this universe. Allah said that in the Holy Quran, in Surah Ar-Rahman, illa bi sultan. Allah said, only with his majesty you will be able to go through this universe. Anyway, Allah's messenger says, the second heaven is like an outer ring which covers our first one, like an onion. You know onion? You know onion? You got the middle part, and outside the middle part, you got another layer, then you got another layer on top, 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 yeah? So right at the core of the middle is our, our earth, our universe. Our universe is right at the middle. So he said, if you compare all the billions of stars and the Milky Ways and the galaxies compared to the second one, he said it would look like our whole universe looks like a coin <coughs> compared to a desert. A coin compared to a desert. desert. You know, if you took a coin and you threw it in the desert, that little coin in the middle of the desert, that little coin is our universe in comparison to the second universe Allah created. The second heaven Allah created. Then he said, if you take the second one and the first one together and compare it to the second one, the first and the second together will look like a coin compared to a whole desert. And then he said, if you take the third, the second, the first, put it all together, compare it to the fourth, it will look like a coin compared to a, uh, an entire desert. And he said, you take the fourth, fifth, like that, all the way till you get the seventh. Then he said, you take the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, all seven heavens, seven earths, all of them together. And you compared it to Allah's throne. 
it will look like a coin compared to a desert. And Allah does not sit on his throne. Allah's throne is exemplary. Allah's throne is there to show his power. Allah does not sit on his throne. Allah will, Allah cannot, it, it, it's, not, it's not a thing the way I sit on this chair, that, that like a king sits on his uh, throne. Allah does not sit on his throne. It's just there as a symbol of him being in power. That throne has got a weight. Zina ta'arshihi means oh Allah, the weight of that throne, that's that much in weight I say subhanallah to you, that much in weight I say alhamdulillah to you. Subhanallah. Wazina ta'arshihi. What do you say? Wazina ta'arshihi. Wazina ta'arshihi. Means what? The weight of Allah's throne. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Adada khalqihi. Wa rida nafsihi. Wazina ta'arshihi. We kneel it there. Again. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Adada khalqihi. وَرِضَى نَفْسِهِ وَزِنَةَ عَرْشِهِ and the, and the last one is وَمِدَادَ كَلِمَاتِهِ Say it. وَمِدَادَ كَلِمَاتِهِ Say it. وَمِدَادَ كَلِمَاتِهِ وَمِدَادَ كَلِمَاتِهِ Say it. وَمِدَادَ كَلِمَاتِهِ Okay, now midad means ink. What does midad mean? Ink. Oh Allah, as much ink it takes <coughs> to describe how wonderful you are. Subhanallah. How much ink it takes if you, in one part of the Quran it says, it says what? In one part of Allah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ If you were to take all the different trees from the earth, every tree that grew on the earth, you take every tree and you start chopping them up and you cut them up and you start making pens with them. Small <coughs> pens or pencils. If you make the pencils with them and after that you take all the oceans of the earth and you turn all the ocean into ink. And then you start with one pen and with the ink and you try to write the beloved names of Allah. You try to write how wonderful Allah is. You try to describe how beautiful Allah is. You try to describe how many majestic qualities He has. Allah says your pens will finish. Your ink will dry up, the oceans will finish, but my names and my majestic qualities will not finish. Subhanallah. You will not be able to finish how wonderful I am. Allah. 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 What is it? kalimati. Which means what? As much ink as it takes to praise you, as much ink as it takes to write your names, as much ink as it takes to say how wonderful you are. That many times I say subhanallah to you. That many times I say alhamdulillah to you. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zinata arshihi wa midada kalimati subhanallah wa bihamdihi عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته والمتان سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته أو الله I say how pure you are Oh Allah, I say how great you are. Oh Allah, I praise you as much times as your creation are on the earth. I have praised you, I have said subhanallah to you so many times that until you are pleased and the weight of your throne and as many things it will take and as much ocean it will take, as many pens it will take to describe your wonderful nature. Oh Allah, I have said that to you three times. How much will I get for the 15, 20 seconds I spend for you? Allah says the time, Allah's messenger says the time from Fajr till Zuhr, six hours of zikr, I will give you free of charge. Allah. Six hours of zikr. You say it twice, you know, three times and three times. You get 12 hours of zikr reward. This is the bank of the Akhirah. This is the real bank. 
Now, brothers, you've, learnt, you've, you've listened to it now, you've learnt it now, sisters who are listening, you've learnt it now. But my sisters, my brothers, don't make it a manual. You've got to now start this. You can read this anytime. This is not Fajr and Zohar. This is not Maghrib Shah. You can read it anytime in the day you want. You know one thing I like? When you're in your own home, when you're in your own home, your own family knows you, and you stay in your home, and you might be doing some chores of the house. You might be cooking, you might be cleaning, you might be washing the dishes, you might be just sitting down on the sofa, you might be relaxing, you might be just trying to get yourself to sleep. But especially when you're awake, especially not, not, not the time, the time when you go to sleep, okay, you say to yourself in your mind. But the time when you're awake, as you're walking in the house, make it a habit, make it a habit. As you're walking in your house, let your family hear you. Subhanallah wa bihamdi Adad al-Qadhi Wa rida nafsihi Wa zinat arshihi Wa midada kalimati Just say it, just say it again and again to yourself. Your wife will get used to you and she'll know my husband is in dhikr. Your son will get used to you, your daughter will get used to you. And you know what? This will bring barakah and blessing to your house. Subhanallah. Angels will frequently visit your house because whatever the dhikr is, angels are coming there. Whatever the dhikr is, Allah, the, the, the Mawlana said before the marriage, I am the one who sits with the one who remembers me. This is a hadith in Bukhari. O oh my servants, whosoever will remember me in their heart and in their mind. I will remember him in my own existence. Whoever will remember me in their mind, I will also remember him in my own existence. Whosoever will remember me in a gathering, I will remember them in a gathering better than that. We've remembered right now Allah, yes? Who have you remembered our brothers? Allah. Allah says, you say this, what the meaning of this is this. You say Allah, 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 Allah. You say that Allah says, Oh Ibrahim, Allah says, Oh Ismail, Allah says, Oh Muhammad, Allah says, Oh Khalid, Allah says, Oh Musa. Allah say Musa, Musa, your name is Musa. Musa, Musa, you say Allah, Allah, Allah says Musa, Musa, Musa. So Allah, 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 Allah says what? Allah says, He says Zaid, Zaid, Zaid. Say Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah says, You remember me and I will remember you. Allah. When you've made your friends, see these boys, they grow up into these ghetto places and they want bodyguards. What do they want? Bodyguards. bodyguards. They want the blood. <laughs> they want some, someone to back them up. Yeah. They want someone, he's called his posse. He's, he's backup. His street boys, his clan, his den, his blood, his brothers, his brethren, whatever he calls them. He might as well call them his kebabs. <laughs> that's as good as they are. They're not blood for you. They're not brothers of yours. I'll be on the day of judgment. Allah's whoever's with you on the day of judgment is your real brother. <laughs> close friends of this earth, very good buddies, very close friends. Will be contrast enemies, sharp enemies on the day of judgment. Allah says, "Illa al-muttaqin, except those who had my taqwa, who had my remembrance, who used to fear me, who were conscious of me. Today, your friend is none other than Allah Azza wa Jal." Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now, when you have Allah says, "What?" Ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim. Become my friend, become my friend, then you will have no more fear. You will have nothing to grieve, no one will touch you, no one dares touch you. Man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harb. You become my friend, anyone dare touches you, I declare war from the skies on that person. I declare war from the skies on that person. The hadith of Bukhari. 
من عاد وليا فقد آذنته بالحرب. You start becoming, you start showing your enmity to my close one, and I will deal with you. I will show you who I am from the skies because this is my friend. This is my friend. This is my servant. This is my close one. You dare touch my close one? So these brothers, they want, they want a backup. My brothers, the backup that we want is who? We want Allah, and that's why. When I'm going, I'm moving, I'm sitting here, it's Allah, 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 Allah. Now when you say that and you're on the streets, you say that and you're on the streets, who's with you, brothers? Who's with you? Nothing to fear when Allah is. You don't need no blood, you don't need no pussy, you don't need nothing. Because if there's a whole gangsters, group of gangsters coming towards me, Allah's Messenger taught me the Sunnah is to be humble. I'm not going to walk like this. <coughs> <laughs> you walk like that in front of them, they'll walk like that. They come next to you, you push them one, they're going to push you one. You're going to look at them like that, they're going to look at you like that. You're going to say, what are you looking at? They're going to say, what are you looking at? You smack you one, you smack them one. Who's there for you? No. <coughs> Who's there for you? Then blood, 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 blood turns into gang fight. What for? Just because the guy had a problem in his walk. He didn't know how to walk properly. <laughs> the guy's jeans were falling halfway down his pants. <laughs> I mean, the guy, why is he halfway? Why not full down the pants? <laughs> My friend, you want to show your pants? You want to advertise your pants? Please advertise all of it. <laughs> show the full pants. We don't want to see the top part of it. We want to see the full thing. And then if you really want to get good, take your trousers off and walk. Walk with your pants. Why are you showing half your pants? Why are you showing the top part of your M1 at the back? Why well, you want to show the top part, huh? You, to, you have no shame. Rasulullah says, You have no shame, you might as well do what you want. When you lose shame, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. When the guy has no embarrassment in front of Allah, no embarrassment in front of people, no embarrassment in front of his relatives, no embarrassment in front of his parents, when the embarrassment is finished, that guy might as well do anything. Because that's what he will do. It's not a license for him to go and do anything. It means that this person, <coughs> nothing's stopping him now. You want your backup? You want your backup? Your backup is Allah. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal Allah is enough. Allah suffices. And I want where? Oh, I want where? Where do I want Allah? I want Allah here. I want Allah on my streets with me. Meaning that Allah's help is with me. I want Allah in my home. I want Allah in my bed. When I go to bed, I want Allah to be with me, to look at me, to, to have His mercy on me, to make me sleep on time, to make me wake up on time. I want Allah's ribs to go inside me and to digest properly. I want Allah, Allah, Allah. And Allah's made it so easy, brothers. I'm going to tell you one easy way. Now, you might be going up there, you might go to work on Tuesday, and you might be in your office, and someone, Jawan, is there, and you're doing the photocopying, and you're going, Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi. I'm Jawan's looking at you. What are you done, She's looking. You can't do that when the others are there, they're going to think of something wrong. So Allah's made it easy for you. Or how has Allah made it easy for you? Allah has done such a wonder. The biggest zikr on the earth, the best zikr is the most secret zikr. And it can be done secretly. How? Right. Quietly do this for me. Subhanallah, quietly go. What's happened to your lips? Is it moving or not moving? Moving, yes? So even if you're there and you don't want somebody to know you're doing zikr, you're going to smoke. They're going to think, man, he's in a meeting, sitting there going, something wrong with him, man. I just, you're right, man, you're right. You're right. Hey, we've got all some mental hospital down the road. You're right. So what do you do? They came to the Prophet and they said, Nashaw Allah, what is the best zikr? Allah. And he said, La ilaha illallah. What did he say? La ilaha illallah. What did he say? La ilaha illallah. Now, do me one thing. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. All of you close your mouth. And now say, La ilaha illallah. Don't say, La ilaha illallah. Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Say, La ilaha illallah. Don't open your lips. Don't, don't open your lips. 
Is it possible? Yes. yes, yes. yes. Do you have to move your lips? No. No. The greatest dhikr, Allah made it the most silent dhikr. The greatest dhikr, Allah made it the one that the lips doesn't have to move. There's two dhikr. There's two types of dhikr. The lips doesn't have to move. One is La ilaha illallah, and one is Allah Allah. One is La ilaha illallah, one is Allah Allah. In the hadith of Bukhari, it says, La taqumu sa'a hatta la yuqalu fil ardi Allah Allah. The day of judgment will not come until a person, until no one on the earth is saying Allah Allah. Allah Allah is also a dhikr. Some people say Allah Allah is not a dhikr, but it is also a dhikr. It's a dhikr. Why not? The guy is in love with Rebecca. And he says, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca. And then he writes Rebecca. He writes everything. Every R, Rebecca, this, that. Everything Rebecca. Now he's doing dhikr of who? Rebecca. He's saying one name. He's doing dhikr. So if I say Allah, Allah, who dhikr am I doing? Allah, Allah. Allah dhikr. Allah. Some people say Allah, Allah is not dhikr. How could it not be dhikr? So do Allah, Allah with your mouth closed. Go on. Do Allah, Allah, Allah with your mouth closed. Go on. No one needs to know, brothers. Secretly yourself, you are becoming a billionaire with Allah. Subhanallah. Your bank balance is becoming so rich. And no one knows. And the greatest amal, greatest actions are those of sincerity. No one needs to know. No one needs to know what's going on in your mouth. No one needs to know what's going on in your heart. It's only something between you and Allah. And what do I look forward to? I'm going to sum it up in the next one minute. So what do I look forward to? I look forward to, first, at the time of my death, I want to meet Allah. Who do I want to meet? Allah. Man ahabba liqa'i, ahbabtu liqa'ahu. It's a hadith of Bukhari. Whosoever wants to meet me, whosoever looks forward to meeting me, Allah. Whosoever wants to meet Allah, whosoever looks forward to meeting Allah. Whosoever loves to meet Allah, Allah says what? I love to meet him as well. I love, look forward to meet him as well. Whoever loves and yearns to meet me, I yearn to meet him. Whosoever hates to meet me, I hate to meet him as well. Allah. Allah. Who do you want to meet at the moment of death? Come on, guys. Who? Allah. 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 And then on the day of judgment, when we all come up, the one that I want to meet, the one who told me about Subhanallah, he wa bi hamdihi. The one who told me about Subhanallah, he wa bi hamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimati. The one who told me to pray Fajr, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. The one who told me to sit, do my tasbih. The one whom the Sahaba went to and they said, Messenger of Allah, they have beaten us. The one who told them to say, Subhanallah, it's a sadaqah. Alhamdulillah, it's a sadaqah. La ilaha illallah, it's a charity. Allahu Akbar is a charity. The one who said all of this. The one who is, Inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashira. The one who is a witness on the day of judgment, the one who is a witness on this earth, the one who is a giver of good news, the one who is a warner of all the evil news. Allah says, He is one who calls to Allah and He is the one whom Allah has made as a lantern for the entire universe. On the day of judgment, I want to greet that Prophet arm to arms, neck to neck, and go and hug the Prophet. Do you want to do this, brothers? Do you want to do this, brothers? For that, you follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Jazakumullah, Hayyu Akhir Dawana, Alhamdulillah.